Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are we ready for the word of God this morning? Glory to God. Today I want to speak on, um, it's a serious pastor I've done before, but just adding an installment to it, it's, it's called God Likes It Big. God Likes It Big. Somebody say, God Likes It Big. Big. And today I will be talking about kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement. Luke chapter 14, I'll read from verse 16 to 24. I want everybody looking into a Bible. I want everybody looking into a Bible. It's very important this morning. What I'm talking about this morning is so important. God sent Jesus Christ for it. So important. Kingdom advancement. So let's look into the scripture. And please, if you are here this morning and you have a phone, you're reading from a phone or not, please share the service um, right now. It's a good thing to do. Um, the word will be spread abroad in the city. So please, um, you can share the service right now. We're on Facebook and I think we're on YouTube too. Luke chapter 16 verse, Luke chapter 14, sorry. I'll read from verse 16 to 24. And then I'll read all the scriptures and we'll get into the word of God. Amen. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. They began to make it. Excuses were not there. They made it. They created it. They began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. And I ask you to have me excused. And the other said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore... I cannot come. His own was expressed. I cannot come. I cannot come. <laughs> That's interesting. So that the servant went and came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you have commanded. And there is still room. Somebody said there's still room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come. Compel them to come that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. None. None shall taste. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. Isaiah 9 7. Now, I'll just take the first sentence. That's of interest to me. It says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Of the increase of his government, there will be no end. It is limitless. Of the increase of his government, there will be no end. And finally, Mark chapter 4, verse 30. Mark 4, verse 30. Okay, so I'll just read um, from 30 to 32 just so we get the context there. Then he said, To what shall we like in the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seed of, on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. Amen. Kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement. You agree with me this morning and let's just set the ground rules before we begin. And this is it. It's simple. The kingdom of God is designed to grow without limits. Of the increase of this is kingdom, there shall be no end. There shall be no limit. That is how the kingdom was designed. That is the design of God's kingdom. To grow without limits. It is a limitless growth. From the beginning, that is how God initiated and instituted his kingdom. To grow without limit. And it's, it's not awkward. It's not strange. If you are an entrepreneur, you started a business or something. No entrepreneur or a businessman who start any business will not want to see it grow. If you start anything, a business, a relationship, a ministry, you will want to see it grow. Nobody begins a project, begins something, and then celebrates its stagnancy. 
Nobody comes on Facebook and says, hey, thank God I've been married for five years and for five years we have been just the way we are. No growth, nothing. We have started this business and it's ten years to the glory of God we have been stagnant. Nothing has changed. Nothing has moved. Nobody celebrates stagnancy. So the kingdom of God also should not be stagnant. If you had any biology in school or something, you would have learned that living things, one of the characteristics is that they grow. They grow. That is what makes it living. Because it doesn't remain the way it was. And the kingdom of God is also living and active. Anything that is healthy, anything that is alive should grow. If it's not growing, something is wrong. If you have a baby and it's um, one year, it's, it's, it's not working, it's not moving, something is wrong. Anything that is alive should grow. And that is the design for the kingdom. That is the mandate for the kingdom. And where did we get all this desire for growth and improvement from? It's from God. That is the nature of God. He puts that in us. It's not foreign. It's from God. This desire. It's in him because he likes it big. He desires that everything he does grows. And if you're still doubting, he said in, in, in the scriptures, he said, I, before Jesus left, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And you know, that, that, that statement is in the continuous tense. I will build. It means for every year, for every century that the kingdom of God is on earth. That the church of God remains on earth. Jesus is building. He's adding a building block. He's adding a building block. He is building. In the book of Acts chapter 1, how many disciples were left in the upper room where the spirit of the Holy Spirit came? How many? 120. He left 120 in the church. Today we have a whooping over 2 billion people from 120. So it is in the design of God that his kingdom should grow. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah where we read, it says of the increase of this kingdom, there shall be no limit, there shall be no end, there shall be no restriction, there shall be no boundary, even the gates of hell is not capable of putting a hold on the growth of the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is a living thing. And you know why it is living? It was birthed by a living God. That's why God cannot give birth to dead things. It was birthed by a living God. That is why it is living. And then apart from being birthed by a living God, it is being fed by the living word of God. Sunday in, Sunday out. Week in, week out. It's being fed by the living word of God. And so it must grow continuously. It's only something you stop feeding that should die. If not... If you're feeling something and it's not improving, something is wrong. Check it. Something is wrong. That is God's intention for the church. That is his intention. Limitless growth. That it grows infinitely. Infinitely. Now, you must understand that the kingdom of God is not democracy. A king is not voted into power. That is what makes the difference. The kingdom of God is not democracy. A king is enthroned. They are not voted in. So if it was democracy, it would be by who voted more or not. But in the kingdom, no, it is not by voting. It is by authority that the king is put in place. And once the king is put in place by this authority, for his honor and his influence to increase, he must conquer territories. The only way a king can show his influence is by the territories he has conquered, by the kings that are subjected to him. That's how a king becomes influential. Caesar Augustus of the Roman Empire. How were they known? They kept conquering. Alexander the Great. They kept conquering. They kept conquering. The Greek conquered until by the time Jesus was born, the language in Israel was Greek. Just by conquering. And that 
is how the dominion of a king spread. So if we want the glory of God to cover the earth, like the waters cover the sea, the kingdom must grow. The kingdom must expand. The kingdom must be great. The kingdom must be big. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 14 verse 28, it says, in a multitude of people is the king's honor. In a multitude of people. By the vastness of his kingdom. Is his honor. But it continues to say that in the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. If there's a leader and there's nobody to lead, there's no, there's no throne. The glory of the king is in the people he leads. In the multitude of the people he leads. So God likes it big. He likes it big. And, and we see it in, in God's attitude in the scripture. Look all through the scripture. It is painted all through the scripture that God likes fruitfulness. He likes growth. He doesn't hate it. That is the agenda of God for man. He likes growth. He likes fruitfulness. He, he, Jesus said, in this my father is glorified. When you bear fruits. When you are fruitful. He said, that is how my father is glorified. He said, I have chosen you. I have appointed you to go and bear fruit. And that your fruits may abide. The first thing he told Adam, be fruitful and multiply. God likes multiplication. He likes growth, people of God. That is his nature. If we are not growing, if his church is not growing, something is wrong. Something is wrong. It's not God. Because he likes it. Big. The only time we, one of the times we saw Jesus angry in the, in, the, in the Bible, he went to a tree to eat from it. And it was not fruitful. The Bible even said that it, is, it was not the time for figs. But he cursed the tree. For just, it's, it's against the DNA of a living thing. Not to grow. To be stagnant. He cursed that tree. The kingdom of God, just like we read about the monster seed, my start small. But it is not permitted to remain small. It started as 120 in the upper room. Today we are over 2 billion. And there is no end to it. Because we have over, over 7 billion people on earth. We have not even gone halfway. So there is no limits yet. Until the last man is saved. We are not done. We are not done. Until the 7 billion person is saved. We are not done. That is the mandate upon the church of God. But you know, as much as the kingdom is supposed to grow and expected to grow, there's a little problem somewhere. And that's what I will share with us this morning. A little problem. And the problem is this. You know, God cannot grow this kingdom from heaven. The heaven is his dwelling. The earth is his full store. He can't grow it from there. He needs human partnership. To grow this kingdom. To move this kingdom to what it is meant to be. He needs men to partner with him for this growth. He needs men to partner with him. Because he can't leave his throne and all that is supposed to be happening in heaven. To come and be evangelizing in Kado Estate. Or in Wusi Market. No. Below him. He needs human partnership. Just, just imagine with me. You're a CEO. You have a very um, a, a thriving organization in the city of Abuja and all over Nigeria. And you're looking forward to break the limits and grow. You want to spread. You want to go international. And then somebody calls you and tells you there's an opportunity, an opening in New York. And we need you to come and close this deal. Once you close this deal, your organization is going to be in New York. And you will make a lot of money and have more influence. And as excited as you are about this opportunity, you discover that there's an important meeting, an important meeting you have to attend in Abuja on that very day when you're supposed to be in New York. And that meeting, you need to attend it because the life of your organization depends on it. You just have to be there. If your organization in Nigeria must even survive, you have to be there. You have not saved in Nigeria and you want to pursue New York. And you are in the middle of all of it. Thinking, how can I make this work? And one of your staff come to you and say, sir, I can do this. I 
I can go to New York. I can close the deal. I can take us to New York. And in your confusion and all, can you, can you do it? And he said, I will go in your name and I will do it. And he goes and let's say maybe uh, right in the meeting while you are expecting to hear from him, you saw your phone ring and you are, you are, you are scared. Did he close the deal or not? And then you pick up the phone and he says, boss, we are now in New York. I closed the deal. Welcome to New York. Cream calls out, is now in New York. How will you feel as the boss? How will you feel? What will happen to your heart? If I am the boss, I'll first tell him, see, look for the most expensive hotel in New York. Check in, check in. Check in for now so that we'll talk from there. By the time, by the time you return to Nigeria, you cannot be an ordinary staff again. You have become a partner. You will be sitting in the board meetings with me. As wicked as I am, if I can think like that, how will God think about that man that is about his business on earth? How will God think about that man that is furthering his kingdom on earth? That is why he said he needs human partners. He needs partners on earth to do this work, to expand this kingdom. I need partners. I need men to do it. And what did God do? In that passage you read, the Bible says he prepared a feast. The great man, he prepared a great feast. And yes, God prepared a feast. And in that passage it says, the feast is ready. The feast is ready. And the feast is the church. He says the church is ready. My church is ready. I have prepared my church for the 21st century. I have prepared my church for this day. I have given my church the solution for 21st century problems. He said the church is ready. I have prepared my servants. I have prepared a feast. And every day we prepare a feast. Right now a feast is being prepared. Right now. Right now. On Wednesday, a feast was prepared. Next week, Wednesday, there will be another feast. Tonight, there will be a feast in the lighthouse. We are not, we, there's no scarcity of the feast. It's scarcity of partners, of men. Of men. The feast is ready, he said. The feast is prepared. And after he prepared the feast, the next thing he did, the Bible said, he sent out invitations. He sent out invitations. Because the feast can be so nice, but if people don't know about the feast, they won't come. They won't come. So he sent out personal invitations to people. And you know, God sent out that invitation on Calvary. On the cross, as Jesus died, God was sending out an invitation to the whole world. That my son is that servant I am sending to you. Believe in him and you will have eternal life. On the cross of Calvary, God sent out invitation to all men, to mankind. Of every race. Of every gender. He sent out invitations. At Calvary. You know, until you understand what happened at Calvary? You won't know what it cost God to do this invitation, to create this feast. Until you transport yourself to Calvary on that hot afternoon. Dust everywhere. Until you stand beside Mary and the apostles and see Jesus on the cross. Until you understand the thorns piercing through his flesh into his skull. Until you understand the nail scarred hands. Until you understand the spear going into his side and blood gushing out on that hot afternoon. Until you understand the stripes all over. You will think we are making noise. You will think Pastor Wally wants to just fill his church. But once you understand Calvary. Once you understand the blood. Once you understand what it cost God. He said it was my son. It was my son. I put on the cross. My son. It was his blood. That's the most expensive gift. The gift of the blood of Jesus.
Jesus on Calvary. He said, this is the one and last invitation. The blood of bulls could not do it. The first Adam could not do it. But this son on the cross has done it. Has done it. And Jesus on Calvary was saying that day, it is finished. I have finished the work. I have finished the work. And from Calvary, his hand was stretched. Janet, come. I have finished. Moses, I have finished. But Lomi, I have finished. Come to Calvary. Come to the cross. His hands were stretched out. Invitation went out that day. Come to Calvary. Come to the cross. But you know what? Men had their excuses. They had their reason why they would not come. They were busy. They, they, they had stuff to do. Calvary. You can hold it a bit. I have stuff to do. Men had their excuses. People were busy. Things were contending for the attention of men like the 21st century. They had their excuses. And I want us to look at the excuses together. You know, the first person said, let's look at it together, please. He said, I have bought a piece of land and I must go and see it. What did the second person say? I, I, let's look at the eyes. Let's count them. I have bought five yoke of oxen and I, I, I'm going to test them. The third person, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. You know what Jesus is simply saying there? The kingdom cannot grow until self dies. All through history, the kingdom of God has grown on the backs of the sacrifices of men. The blood of the apostles, they said, was the seed for the church. Nothing grows from the place of comfort. Calvary was not comfortable. The thorns were not comfortable. But he died anyway. Nothing grows from the place of comfort. If, if, it, if self don't die, the kingdom will not grow. As many eyes that we have, I counted eight in that passage. I, 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 I. Until this I in the church of God, until self in the church dies, nothing will grow. We can preach, we can shout, we can pray, but until men say we are ready to give our lives for this kingdom, we will remain the way we are. Until men come out of the place of comfort, the kingdom of God will not grow. Until men lay their lives down, the kingdom cannot grow. You know, that reminds me, you know, most times when we, and it's not easy most times to come up here and you are begging. Please, can, can we have a, we have, we have called for a lighthouse venue in Guarimpa for the last two years. And we have people in Guarimpa. But I don't like my space to be evaded. I, I like my space. I, I. I can't be a lighthouse leader now because I have a lot of things on my plate. I, until this I dies in the work of God on earth, the church will not move on. And you know, what Jesus was also telling us with these excuses, is he was saying no excuse is good enough. No excuse is good enough. Let's, let's analyze these excuses. He says, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. Who buys land without inspecting it? You buy a land. You have not seen it. You transferred money. And then you are going to see the land at night during supper. What? Are you going to use torch or what? To check the beacons and all. At night. He created that excuse. It doesn't exist. That's what God is saying to us. We are the ones creating them. They don't exist. This one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. At night. Oxen will run away. You even find it. Who, who buys 
oxen without seeing them or without testing them. You go to buy a car and you they just say, That's the car over there. You say, Oh, that's it. Okay, um, I can't number. You transfer before you even own the car, you have to transfer. It's when you are reaching beggar that you discover the car doesn't reverse. You call and say, eh, sorry, this car you sold, is like the reverse. No, they walk. Oh. He said, no, not the model. It goes forward, forward ever, backward never. That's the model. Carry me, go here. No, no. <laughs> Who buys a car without, Who buys oxen without tasting them? This one's, the last one said, I've married a wife and I cannot come. All these young men are speaking in tongues. <laughs> Wait until you marry. You know whether that excuse is valid or not. <laughs> a dinner in the evening with your newly wedded wife. Is that not what will make love grow? He said, I cannot come because I've married. Jesus is saying all these excuses. We are the ones actively creating them. We are the ones creating them. They don't exist perspectives and you know what when you look carefully you know just look at those excuses carefully these things all of them they would pass as testimonies these things would have passed as testimonies in church somebody would have come to give testimonies concerning these things and what is God saying God is saying be careful so that the miracle you pray for does not become a stumbling block to my kingdom be careful. You're not telling God. You know, Lord, it's 21st century and truly, 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 I drive an eight-cylinder engine. It's a V8. And with this poor condition, you know, I can't just be driving to church and back, you know. You know, I, I don't know if you, you know, Jesus, when you were around, his horse you were using, you didn't buy fuel. I don't know if you understand, but you say, Pastor, you say, I, I, I just started this business. I used to be broke, but you know, since I started this business, I've been to like seven continents in the last three months. But see, the work of the Lord, just keep doing it. The Lord will be with you, Pastor. The children of Israel, when they were living in Egypt, they were empty, nothing in their hands. God told them, go to your neighbors, meet them. I will give you favor in their eyes. Collect their gold, collect their silver. Collect their jewelries. They will give it to you. Go with them. Preacher said when Israel was were leaving Egypt, they left with the economy of Egypt. Few months later in the wilderness, those blessings became a golden calf. Aaron said, bring your gold. Who gave them the gold? God. It became a golden calf. And God said, Moses, I don't know that these people are so stiff-necked. Allow me to destroy them. The, what I blessed you with has now become a stumbling block. Allow me to destroy them. Moses said, no, Lord. Mercy. Mercy, Lord. Mercy. That the very things we prayed for. Let's be careful. Least the miracle becomes a stumbling block. Least the blessing becomes an idol. But Jesus said, Say, with all these your excuses, no matter what excuse you give, the kingdom is designed to grow limitless. No matter what excuse you give, regardless, the kingdom will grow. The kingdom will grow. So what does God say? He said, you must go out. Church, the Lord said, you must go out. And it's not saying we should go when we like. He said, you must go out quickly, quickly. Jesus says, I must do the work of he who sent me while it is day. For the night comes when no man can walk. For Jesus, there was a night when he couldn't walk. Who are we? It's time bound. He said, you must go out quickly, quickly. Because my kingdom is what is at stake. You must go out quickly and look for men. You must go out quickly and bring it, man. It's time bound. And where should we go? The master told us. He said, go to the highways. Go to the byways. Go to the hedges of the street. Go wherever you can find people. Go. It's that important. Wherever you can find people, go. 
Go to the highways. Go to the streets of Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Go wherever there is a man, the kingdom of God will drive there. Wherever there's a living soul, the kingdom must grow there. Go, go to the airports, go to the hotels, go to your workplace, go to the malls. Everywhere, go. Go and bring them. Because they need Jesus. And you know, the 21st century church is so blessed. We can't say we don't have access to all those places. We have. God has given us so much access in the 21st century. Airport, everywhere. There, so, some of you, you, some of us will come and give testimonies. And it's good. Thank you, Jesus. I've been traveling up and down. I went to the U.S. and I went here. I went here. Thank God for safety. I came back safely. And God is saying, is that all? When I kept callings beside you in business class, he was struggling with depression. He was going to hurt himself. I sat him down beside you in business class and you were quarreling with him over snacks. Is that enough? I, God, God will be pained in heaven at the opportunities we throw out of the window. Say that Uber driver, he was going to take his life. I let you ride in this car. And you were quarreling with him over change. So I go give you hot hot. Give me my change. All of them know they get change. Where did they worry you? Child of light. That is an opportunity. And God has planted them all over us. All around us. Mercy Lord. Mercy. Because the angels will wonder. Jesus is, this, is are these the people you died for? Are these the people? Because it seems like your kingdom is not a big deal to them. Mercy, Lord. Mercy. Mercy, Lord. And what should we do when we go out? He said, compel them to come. Compel them to come. Compel them to come. How do we compel them to come? You must be engrossed by it. You must be engrossed by the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God must just be at the fore of your heart. Except you have some oxygen factory somewhere producing for you. Then you can alienate yourself from the king. But as far as he owns your life and gives you bread. He said go. Compel them to come. Be engrossed by this kingdom. Let it be on your heart. Let it be on your heart. We must pray. We must pray because there are contentions for the souls of men. Demonic contentions. Legions of demons in one man contending for his destiny. They won't let him go. Not because of your microwave prayer. They, they won't let him go. It is a contention. It is a fight. We must generate enough prayer power to saturate the atmosphere because sensuality is in our territory. Go on the streets of Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Everybody's pulling off their clothes. Sensuality. The spirit is hovering. We must contend in the place of prayers to bring men out of the clutches of the kingdom of darkness. We must contend. Pray like never before. Because if you will, don't do it. As far as there are loose ends out there, they will hurt us. They will hurt our children. The things you are trying to protect, they will destroy it. As far as there are loose ends out there. So we must contend in the place of prayer. You must look for the tongues that will match the demon over that man. Over that woman. You know, I have, I have prayed before. But you see this message. The kind of contentions. The things that were happening in the last three days. I almost got frustrated on a Friday morning. One night I woke up to work and I couldn't find network anywhere on my devices. Up till now I can't. And nobody can explain how, why. Contentions. Last night I was praying. Contentions. It was on Friday morning. I was frustrated. And in the morning I, I was just talking with the Holy Spirit. 
And then he told me, he was like, when you decide to move the kingdom of God forward, what you get is not hallelujah and smiles. You get the pushback. So you must pray. You must pray. Somebody, what you are struggling with right now is because you have put your hands in the floor to move the kingdom forward and you are receiving a pushback. God is saying, do not give up or the devil wins. Push until you birth it. Push in prayers. Push in prayers. We must generate enough prayer power in this city to make people walk around the city looking for churches. Sir, please, where can I find a church to attend? I need Jesus. Until we pray like that, we are not ready. And God is opening our eyes to this thing. Yesterday at the retreat, it was powerful. And we're tired of all the seats without people on them. Because that is not the nature of the kingdom. And God needs you. God needs you to go there and bring people in. And I want to stay on this. How do we, um, what should we do? We must create. We must create, we must, we must create contemporary models for evangelism. Christians, we must think, how can we do it in the 21st century? You, you know, there are a lot of people coming and say, Pastor, I've been struggling with this. I need prayers. I need this. I need that. But it's few, just maybe one or twice in the last two years, I can remember, that say, Pastor, if we can do evangelism like this, maybe it will be effective. If we do this, if we do that, few, because nobody's thinking about it. We must create. As the kingdom of darkness is creating, we must create sophisticated weapons, strategies to take down their strategies and weapons and we must engage we must engage we must overcome that inertia and engage people people are going through stuff they don't look like what they are wearing break through that max and talk to them you will be shocked you will be, they don't even know they need jesus break through the max and talk to them you will be shocked i was speaking with somebody and you know, the devil can just mess you up. The devil was just trying to get me into some philosophy and, okay, you have to do this, do that, do that. And at the point, I'm like, this conversation is not worth it. I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do I need to tell this guy now? And the Holy Spirit says, Jesus, it's not philosophy he needs. And I'm like, oh. The conversation was going like this. I just stopped it. I said, bro, just wait. See, let me tell you. All this thing you are saying, it cannot work. I'm not a magician. It's Jesus you need. If Jesus comes into your life, he will do it. So let's not forget about this thing we are talking about. It's Jesus you need. And I'll lead you to Christ now. Like it or not, I'll lead you. Because you need God. I, I can't be going back and forth with you. You need Jesus. We must, we must get angry in our spirit. We must get angry in our spirit. Talk to the people around you in the airplane. Talk to the people around you. Ask them, how are you doing? Can I pray with you? As simple as it is, can I pray with you? Can I have 30 seconds and just pray with you? He says, no, forget about him. Move to the next person. Can I pray with you for 30 seconds? Hold him. He will see it. He will join that prayer. What's wrong with him? And why must the kingdom be full, finally? Why must his house be full? Somebody saying, why must we invite? Why must we do all of this? Because the dominion and kingship of the Lord is dependent on the full house. When we are full, we will have a voice on earth. When we speak, they will listen. We will affect legislations. When we are full, we will have men in high places. A friend of mine was talking about the redesign of the note and all, and he was like, I can do better if I was. I said, just keep quiet. You are not there. You don't make those decisions until we pray our people into those places so they can make godly decisions. The nation will remain where it is. For nation's sake, for nationhood, the kingdom must be full. The kingdom must be full. When it is full, our networks and our friendships will be strengthened. There's a church in this city. The, the, the prominent men in it, when you hear the names of people that attend service there, even you, you will give glory to God. And it's not magical. They started like Miriam, like Sam. They started like every other person else. 
But as they persisted, they kept pushing. They kept pushing. God kept opening doors. He kept opening channels. And they kept floating. They kept floating. Before you know, before you know, the next thing you hear, ah, Sam is head of this and this and this in Nigeria. This is head of this. This has gone to this place. This is over INEC. And they are godly people making good decisions. The kingdom must be full for change to come. The kingdom must be full. If the kingdom is full, we can do great things for God. They just finished the experience. Massive. One of the largest concerts in the whole world. If the kingdom is not full, we can't do that. And that is just in Lagos. We need to replicate those kind of things so that the glory of God. Pastor was saying the other day that some people are saying, why did this person build a big church? Why did this person build a big church? How can our mark be upon the earth when you look from the heavens over the earth and there's no sign of a place of worship over the earth? How can we spread our dominion? Build. Build. Until the kingdom is full. Some bachelors will keep remaining bachelors. Some spinsters will be spinsters. But when the kingdom is full, glory to God. Beautiful ladies will come in. You will see men of God on fire. And our, our ladies will not be looking for men in the clubs. Godly and dedicated men. The one that did Pastor Wale say, bros, 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 calm down, calm down. He will come. Not giving our, our daughters of Zion problems all everywhere. When, there's, when the house is full, it glorifies God. It glorifies God. That's the end of the matter. It brings glory to God when the house is full. And this morning, God is counting on you. 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 That for the life he gave you, that you do just this one thing for him. Bring men into the kingdom. Can we bow our heads in the presence of the Lord? Let's bow our heads in the presence of Jesus.